Hello everyone, Baku here. And today, I want to give you some Torum tips that I wish I really knew very early on. These tips caters to both starters who just started playing and want to start strong, and also for advanced players. Let's not waste any more time. Proceed to the tips. You've probably chose or built your favorite class. But if not, and you're still struggling to find what the best weapon that perfectly suits you, then this tip is for you. When building a character, first the obvious thing, know your style. But how? Answer is, try them yourself, because you won't know unless you try, right? But if you can't it's alright, here's my best in explaining each of them. Okay so, we mainly have DPS and tanks, then throw support occasionally. The DPS class can be categorized into two types, physical attack based and magic attack based. They can either be a glass cannon or bruiser builds. If you like very high DPS, go for glass cannon builds. Though, playing this style is a bit dicey, you have to be good at dodging or you're dead. Overall, it's very high risk high reward. However, if you like a balanced build between DPS and defense, then go for a bruiser type build. Two-handed sword and halberd are two solid DPS options if you prefer heavy hitting style. If you prefer a safe play style, choose a ranged weapon, bow and bogan for physical, staff and MD for magic. Pick up katana, DS, or knuckles if you prefer a DPS with fast flashy playstyle and a light degree of intricacy. And if you really want a safe generalist class then shield sub is perfect, which is fantastic for OHs and knuckles. When building a character, find your character's niche or specialty. Don't try to make it do everything. Example, a physical, sub-magic DPS that can heal, buff support, and tank at the same time. That is not how you build a strong character. Yes, you can, but that doesn't mean you should. That character will be mediocre at all the things you've intended for them to do. That is why most hybrids are not up to the standard compared to the current meta. Make a character that specializes at a thing or two. When you make a DPS, min-max it to two to a max of four core DPS skills. These core skills are where your passive skills and equips are gonna be built around on. Skill points are limited, so don't waste them on unnecessary skills. Just keep min-maxing your core skills. Do not spread thin your resources. These resources are Spina, Time, and Leveling Books. They are very valuable and you have to wisely spend them. Focus on one main character in which you will fully invest. Invest time and books in leveling, to level cap, and your hard-earned Spina for gears. Because if you spread your resources and time by making all your characters quote-unquote better at the same time, it really slows down your progress. It only takes 6 to 7 days to cap out one character, and that's if you're touching grass regularly. It can be shorter, but if you're leveling 4 characters at the same time, it'll probably take a month or more. So, focus on one at a time. Rather than buying for a specific character, prioritize a niche piece of equipment that is well suited to the majority of your characters. In this way, you're maximizing your Spina. It allows you to spend less and get the most out of it. Example, if you have a Katana, Bow, Knuckles, and THs, then buying Lace, Clement, or even a Christmas tree is better than an aching or collar tie. Two slots aren't necessary. Depending on class, some weapons are already powerful even with minimal to medium budget. Some weapons were already so strong that even with no slot, they still nuke bosses pretty easily. Examples are heavy hitters like THs, HB, and Bow. Even with no slot, it still is OP. Just make sure that they are at their max refinement. Just buy slots if you really want that excess damage. Depending on class, a weapon should be the first investment, so first buy a decent weapon. But, if the weapon type has a good options of NPC made or drops, then you should buy at gear first, ring second, then armor last. 
Except for Katana which I recommend getting the Makina ring with spec tap first for big unchi, then add gear then armor. I put armor in last because there's a lot of good alternatives for it, compared to add gears plus crystals and ring. So, TLDR, I prefer investing in this order. Weapon, add gear, ring, then armor. Tip for cheap or frugal players. If you don't really like spending a lot on equipments, you can pretty much make all your characters bow. They can do any essential characters you need. From DPS, tech, or crafter blacksmith, to luck farmer. Then all will just share the same equipment. This can get boring so fast, but it saves a lot of Spina. So still pretty good, I guess? You might not need it right now, but you might in the future. Some equipments can be the ideal slot for a specific build that you may decide to make in the future. Additionally, some of these equipments are highly overpowered and quite limited. So, get them. Believe me, I wish I did as well. Soloing is the best way to improve your combat skills because it teaches you how to recognize and read boss patterns. It also improves your reflexes and decision-making speed. Soloing also allows you to fully comprehend your class and make full use of all of your skills and abilities. I understand that soloing a boss and learning its pattern takes a lot of time and trial and error, but the thrill and the sense of achievement of finally killing it is very satisfying. So, if you're bored and don't know what to do in the game, try soloing bosses. I recommend starting with easy bosses like Iconis or Maiden Sword if you're new to soloing. Then move on to more difficult or medium level bosses like Pistius, Gemma, and Furzen. Or take it to Reliza, Vlam, or Erestida if you're a crazy masochist. Star gems are excellent investment opportunities. They can save a lot of skill points and it also can be used by all of your characters at the same time. Some star gems increase in value over time, not only because of their skill value, but also because they are quite rare, and the people who want those star gems are wealthy players willing to pay any amount just to min-max out their character. I can speak for myself because I purchased these star gems when they were less expensive. Like these whack, they were like 500,000 each, and yes, they were still expensive. However, when compared to its current price, it is significantly lower. I can sell it now because the price has increased by like 200%, making the investment well worth it. This is something I'm guilty of. Not farming Studi on a regular basis. Studi grants you Regislets that improve certain skills, increase their power, or change their functions. It also grants additional stats such as Attack and M Attack, a SPD, CSPD, Extra HP, and MP, and some straight up provide OP passive bonuses. Regislets are a game changer and must farm if you want to become stronger. A single Regislet can sometimes significantly improve your build. Like the Zero Stance and Burning Spirit which are both very broken on Katana. So, don't be like me and do Studi on a regular basis. The following is based on preferences. But if you like a clean UI and don't like much text on your screen, like this huge chat for example, you can adjust your chat by going to settings. Go to chat. You can reduce the chat lines, up to you, but I prefer one, as you can always extend it anyways. You can also adjust the font size, but I like it smaller. Then I also prefer using namespace. Again, preferences. You can also change the chat colors, but I won't change it because I'm already used to these colors. Now that's what I like, less and smaller text. It looks clean on combat too. If the damage text is way too big, I find it way too distracting. Especially if I'm with a party or soloing a boss, I can't tell what the boss is doing cause of this humongous text. So if you want to adjust it, you can go to settings. Go to graphics. Adjust the damage font size up to your preference, but I suggest 40 to 50. 
Hmm, much better. If you like this smooth play and smooth combat look, toggle camera follow on which you can find in settings. System. Then set the camera follow settings to one or two. Use the switch set button if you have too many skills that can't fit in your UI. You can find it on character, skills, then shortcut settings. Then pick a button and set it to switch set. We're at set 1 so pick set 2 or next set. Then set up your set 2 and do the same. We're at set 2, so pick set 1 or previous set. Use set 3 if you really have to, cause switching between 3 sets is painful. So, that is all the tips, I think. Anyways, thanks for watching. And apologies, I haven't uploaded in a while, been occupied a lot recently. Plus, there's also not much content in game, so yeah, kinda sad. Eh. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed and learned something new today. Baku, yeeting out! Baku, you said spend wisely, then why you have three freaking to slot NPC katanas? And are they are all neutral? You know that there's no return on investment in NPCs, right? Wait, I... I can explain... <laughs>